Very welcome, cyborgs. Can we do a test and see if you're the high-tech cyborgs? Yes, <laughs> you are. Uh, my name is Michaela Schmid, and I'm going to be the curator for this session about, about augmented reality. I've invited two brilliant minds, which I'm so happy for you to meet. And one of them is going to be here on stage, and the other one we're going to meet later on Skype, and hope that turns out well. Uh, I've divided this session into three main categories, and I want to explore what to do with augmented reality in marketing and media, and business and industry, and retail and consumption. So I want to get good examples on what to do with augmented reality, and, and um, yes, sorry. Uh, but first to talk about this session, I want to start with a short three-slide introduction on, on, on the subject, augmented reality. And then I want to show some video examples from each category. And then we're going to jump back and going to meet Alex Olwal, which is the first guest. Uh, he's actually a Swede, but he flew all this way to talk about augmented reality for industry application. And I actually met him once before, and he, I don't think he knows it, but he blew my mind talking about a kind of screen I will perhaps tell you about later. So uh, just please say very welcome to Alex, Alex with an applause. The next guest we're going to meet is called Vivian Rosenthal. She's from New York, and she's the owner and founder of Gold Run, an augmented reality mobile platform, especially for retailers. And it's going to be interesting. I hope she's going to tell us about the next launch of Gold Run, which is going to uh, come out now in September. But then the introduction. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the hype cycle of new media. And I just wanted to run you through the advantages as I see it with augmented reality. And I think the biggest, biggest advantage is that it's a simple user face. Anyone can use it. If you're, uh, if, let's say you're not very fly on using a computer, or maybe you even don't use your mobile phone uh, to other stuff than maybe calling, sending a text message or making a call. Um, with aug augmented reality, especially with, if it's an in-store solution or maybe it's uh, uh, in the city and on a billboard, you can even then you can interact with the information that's on a screen just with gestures and, and moving around. So I think it's a simple user, face, user interface and I actually invited Lego to come here and there's a Danish toy manufacturer from, uh, but they said actually said hi to the audience so hi from lego and they but they couldn't come because they were too busy developing their next venture of augmented reality uh, i think many of you perhaps have already heard of their augmented reality solution in store it's called digital box and you're going to see it later on in this pre presentation so that venture was really successful for them. They've tried it worldwide and are now going to develop uh, their venture further. So that, I think, is very funny. And the other very uh, advantage of augmented reality, as I see it, is that it's real-time information. As you can see here in this image, it's a launch of a product, a camera, which is going to be now in August. It's a uh, Fujifilm FinePix F600 EXQR. Uh, and it's, they claim it to be the first camera with a built-in augmented reality function uh, that they call Landscape Navigator. And this Landscape Nav Navigator works kind of, I guess you've seen Layer, a mobile phone application, kind of the same. That you have your camera, and if you're going to a different country or city, and you want to take a photograph of a landmark, you can get information on that landmark that you see on the screen, right onto your own screen. You can also use it to find your way back to uh, a previous place you've been visiting before. So that's use of uh, augmented reality in products. And I want to also to give, give you another example which is more um, um, visual about the real-time information. So if I think this is a 
concept, maybe it, maybe it exists as an app too, but if you imagine a screensaver, a Twitter client screensaver, which is visual, when a bird flying past you with the latest twist, and if you want to read it later, you can just put the bird on a branch or so. So that's actually an example of real-time information, so you know how fresh the information can be in this new layer onto, onto the screen. So the interface is simple and the information can be very updated. How many in here uh, went to see Mons Adler's presentation about the Internet of Things? Can we do a hands up? Yes, not all. But um, I would say that augmented reality is kind of the same. The concept within Internet of Things is that physical objects are connected to virtual information. And I would say augmented reality is kind of the same, although visual, it's visual presentation of that kind of information. So, as you can see here in the, these examples, there's lots of kinds of digital interaction going on, on right now. Maybe I should jump away. You see the touch screen. Uh, in the right um, left, you can see uh, this tapping of your mobile phone on a reader and then you get uh, information to it. That's near field co communication. You can also see the interactive surface with the girl running on to an edge. And these are many kinds of interactions, digital interaction user interfaces. And I, w I believe that uh, augmented reality is one of these new media. And I actually think that um, this is a whole new emer uh, emerging market, and of course, augmented reality is one of them. But augmented reality alone won't hit. Like, uh, is it going to hit and replace all the other media? No, it won't, but it's going to be one of them. And I think the use of it are going to increase a lot. And the real reason why I'm here is actually I'm so excited of all the great things you can do with augmented reality, both for uh, communication, for utility, and for entertainment purposes. So I want to give you now uh, a couple of examples, and it's uh, nine videos, and, but they're short, so hang on there. And um, I did, I've, as I told you, I've divided them into three, three categories. And uh, augmented reality can be viewed on three kinds of screens, so keep an eye out for three different kinds of screens in these movies. So as you saw, there were three kinds of augmented reality, and it was web-based for your portable or stationary computer. It's for mobile phones, um, and you, as you saw here, it was layer vision, a new the second version of layer, which you can check into. And then also you have standalone systems, which is uh, maybe on a billboard or in store solution, or maybe you're passing by a shopping window or something. Um, and in the next three movi movies. Um, please check out for three ways to trigger augmented reality. Or actually there are only two and the third is coming in the next movies. Are you ready? Anyone?
to uh, try and highlight the fact that they are working in renewable energy, which they are. And this technology, the uh, augmented reality, I taped a thing to my album and now I'm holding a 3D hologram in my hand thing, can't really say that that's going to save the world. But solar panels, solar panels will save the world. And General Electric is doing good things with solar and wind. Hold on a second. That's right, wind. <laughs> Here comes the sun. On all of these issues at the same time, um, and mostly Metallo is concentrating on the software stack, so our main part is building optical recognition technologies, optical tracking technologies, to mainly make a very accurate alignment of the virtual information with the real world happen. The, the model that's being displayed here is huge for a mobile phone. Only with HP is your PC designed and engineered for comfort and for cooling. Let me talk about another innovation. Design. We think we have a vocabulary of design. We call it MUSE. It stands for Material, Usability, Sensory, and Experience. So, as you saw here, there were two, three different kinds of ways to trigger augmented reality. And one is if you have a marker, AR marker, or an image, uh, you can have object recognition or movement gesture, or you can also have GPS or location-based trigger. So, let's move now to the last three movies. And uh, for this in these movies, maybe you could check out for three criteria making out good augmented reality. Incoming transmission from Autobot headquarters. This is Optimus Prime. Do you read me? We cannot win this war without your help. Choose which runs to follow. Start grabbing virtual goods and collecting rewards. So that, was, that last one was actually the Lego uh, in-store solution I talked to you about, called Digital Box. And uh, as you saw here, I think there are three criteria making out good augmented reality. And that's the real-time information, streamable live information criteria. And it's a simple in interface. And also uh, when augmented reality uses the space, when it's spatially aligned, it not only information flat on the surface, but also uses the depth of your su surrounding, the viewer surrounding. So, um, let us now skip back to Alex Olwal, and, oh sorry, 